I've explained this before, but if you're new to the channel, I'm a little bit hesitant to, to give away all my secrets because they're hard, expensive secrets. But um, I'm going to tell you how we plant pumpkins and hard winter squash with this international cyclo planter. So the way this cyclo planter works is it's bass backwards from the way a planter is supposed to work. Uh, a lot of modern, well most modern planters operate off of vacuum and it's a great system. This thing works off of air pressure completely backwards. Doesn't work as well but it works all right. This is uh, actually a Milo drum right here. If you were planting Milo there will be a seed stuck to every one of these as it's turning because there's air pressure in here. I think it's supposed to be about 10 psi. Gauge don't work right. Um, never had a real problem out of it. But there'll be a seed stuck to every one of these holes. And this drum turns as you go across the field and you can change how fast it turns by all those gears and sprockets over there. As it gets around to here, these rubber wheels will cut the air flow off so the air is not pushing the seed against the hole anymore and the seed falls off of the hole and blows down some tubes that I'll show you in a minute and or it blows into a manifold and it comes out these tubes that you can see running to the row units here and it the air that same air pressure will blow the seeds out the shoe behind the double disc openers um, then the spike closers uh, loosen the sidewall compaction and semi close the trench press wheel uh, gives you good seed to soil contact it actually does a really good job of getting the seeds in the ground properly where it uh, struggles is with um, singulation um, You'll get some doubles and some erratic spacing when you're planting corn um, and some skips. But some of that may be just because it's this particular planter is old and worn out. Um, they are pretty decent planters. I'm going to take this drum off and show you the modification that I have made for planting pumpkins and squash. It took me a long time of thinking about this and messing with it and a couple of years of planting pumpkins and squash with it to figure all this mess out. Alright, I'm going to show you the way this, the inside of the guts of this thing works first. So this wheel runs off of a set of gears or a chain and sprockets back there and it turns. That's what rotates the drum. Um, actually not 100% sure what the purpose of that wheel is. Here is the manifold and you can see when the pressure gets cut off, the seeds get shot down into the tubes from that manifold. Um, this is the brush that theoretically is supposed to brush off any extra seed planting corn and soybeans it does uh, these wheels ride on the inside of the drum that keeps it from uh, brushing off too much then it's got this little hook here that you can pull down if you don't want quite so much brushing which is where I've always had to run it it may be an air pressure issue but I learned just today I've spent the better part of half a day messing with this planter and trying to really get it dialed in because of the shape of the pumpkin seeds and the size variation and everything on them, this brush, even with the hook holding it down from the fully extended position, it was still just tickling the drum and that caused a lot of skips and misses. Uh, so it took me a long time to figure this out. So y'all getting a hard learned lesson right here but you see how much higher that brush will be with a hook i pulled it down and put a little zip tie on it to hold it all the way down 
and as soon as I did that instantly my skips stopped now I never have a missing seed out here so that was one of the biggest keys to get this thing to plant pumpkin everything's getting outrageously expensive I don't have to tell you that you already know it for 10 to 12 acres of pumpkin and squash the seed was around seven thousand dollars and I'm not saying that to brag at all or complain but it's just a fact and that said I can't afford to be planting a lot of doubles and last year we were having when I was planting squash I was having quite a few doubles and misses and it just wasn't doing all that great of a job and I determined my holes were too too large because I was using a corn drum and the corn drum these little dimples are really uh, probably two or three times that size and the hole is probably almost an eighth of an inch um, so I switched to the Milo drum and I used to would duct tape the inside of the drum all except for eight holes well this year I came up with a better solution and like I say I've been messing with this thing for a solid half day trying to get it dialed in but I got this idea from a monoceum vacuum planter unit that is on my poly planter so you can see I bondoed the inside of this drum and if I ever wanted to use it for Milo that may have been a bad idea because it's Probably at Bondo will never ever come out. But anyway, that's beside the point. Hopefully this is gone. This I just uh, bit the bullet and did it because the, the duct tape gave me a lot of trouble. With the seeds rolling in there over the course of five acres or so, it would start peeling off. But what I did was I bondoed all the holes and then I drilled my I re-drilled the holes uh, about 80 thou which is just a tick over a sixteenth, like three thirty seconds, a little bit smaller than three thirty seconds. I redrilled the holes, and I put two here, and then you go around, and I put two here, and they alternate. So, typically, when you're planting, we're planting pumpkins, say on black plastic. Our rows are five foot apart, and we plant our pumpkins about two foot apart. On five foot centers of the rows so it's really aggravating to only plant two rows with a four row planter because then your spacing's all jacked so you can see maybe get a better picture of what's going on on the outside here these two and then it alternates to these two and every quarter of the drum has a set of holes here and then alternating to here so what that does and there's one Let's see there's one there's one should be one right here somewhere afternoon with different size seeds trying to get it just right but what the end result is and it's working phenomenal at the moment I better not jinx myself there's about six foot in between each seed within one row and then it staggers so dead center of that spacing there'll be a seed and so forth and so on so what that does <clears throat> is it ultimately gives me the same amount of spacing but it puts them in the field a little more it's not dense but they're more spread out more uniform so that they can get the ground covered faster which equals less weed pressure I've uh, been doing this method for a few years now and it works really well um, I just had the singulation issue and so I wanted to save money, save seed. So that's the reason I spent all this time getting this, this sucker dialed in just right. Much time and preparation will pay dividends when it comes time to plant. I would have loved to have been planting all day today, but 
I'm I'm tickled to death that I got my planter right. So I'll I'll make a video when I get started planting. I've got to go get a different tractor hooked up to a sprayer because with our the chemicals that I spray behind these no-till pumpkins and squash, they have got to be sprayed immediately following planting. If you do not, it will cause you uh, some damage to your plants, potentially kill them all together, and we don't want that. Uh, can't afford that. Got all my pumpkins, gourds, and hard squash set out here, and just trying to make sure I know exactly what I've got. But I will, I am gonna do a, a little video on my weed wiper setup, cause, just because I had so many people ask about it. But it's gonna be uh, maybe another week or two, because right now, it's the 18th of June. I got to get these pumpkins in the ground. That's priority number one right now. Um, but after I get these pumpkins planted and sprayed, then we will, uh, We'll, we'll talk about wiping some weeds. But I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you next time.